I remember this talk I had with my mom. I was 16. And I was telling her, like, I would rather be a surf bum than, like, some corporate stooge. And, but even, like, back then, like, you know, I had that memory pretty clearly that I would rather be happy than rich. I don't know why I want a dirt bag. All I know is that I want to, like, that something inside of me wants to just, like, give everything away or sell it and, like, just go live freely for a while. And I've wanted to do that for a while, even before climbing, and I just never did it. So I, I feel like I'm finally just, like, getting around to it. Fishing for the truth In a black pond atop my lap It's too wide to crawl Because it's never gonna be the right time The stars are never gonna align You're gonna have like shit to overcome like, And if you allow like those like type of situations Where like it just isn't like syncing up perfectly Like if you like let that dictate Whether you do something or not Like it's never gonna happen There's like a little voice in my head saying like, don't do it, this is crazy. And then like next thing I know, like half my shit is gone and my room is empty. And I was like, well, it's too late now. Like, and once I kind of like cross that threshold, I'm, like there's this sense of like lightness that comes from it. Everything that I own either you know fits in a car or in a backpack and yeah, I don't gotta like I can just go wherever I want. Like that, there's something really liberating about that feeling so far. I feel like you can just act through fear. You can just like do it anyways. Even though, like, it's not that I'm not afraid. It's just I don't let that dictate any of my decisions. Moved to Arizona and uh, from DC. Just to be close to my son. My son was out here. It's too expensive in DC. So, as far as for like the way I want to live, Arizona's way cooler. It's way cheaper to live out here. DC is all about like if you want like a good job, you want to try and like I don't know, be that guy. DC is cool, I guess. But if you just want to like relax and have fun and not have to pay too much for rent or anything like that, Arizona. Hey, you. Have fun hard time? Yeah. Started climbing in March of 2010. A little over two years now. I guess it's one of those all-encompassing sports. It's not just physical. It's a lot of mental aspect to it, and that's always drawing me to it. it pushes you. Like, when you want to do something above your limit, you just gotta try harder, and that's not just, not just a physical thing, it's all in your head. Oh, that's easy. Anybody that knows me will know I'll say bouldering anytime. 
it's not that uh, I don't like sport climbing, because honestly I respect sport climbers more because they're doing the same thing, so longer. But it just doesn't suit me as well. I don't have endurance and I don't like being bad at stuff, so I stay away from it a little bit. I'll get in there every now and again, but bouldering just suits my personality better. to say like I started probably in 2010 that I've never been consistent with it it was like in three month bouts and then I'd quit and then I'd come back to it you know a couple months later and maybe go for two months and then like I guess I've been climbing consistently since October I don't know I just missed it and I needed something to do like I get super antsy if I'm not being active and like whenever I'm active I feel really good and I'm like just happy so and I, I've done it before and it made me happy before so Why question um I don't know it keeps you in really good shape and it's different than the gym it's different than just going in and I don't know, pumping iron or whatever. I don't want to like, like that to me, like that's not an athlete, you know what I mean? You know, climbing takes, it takes everything. And that's different, you know, different from sport to sport. Some people just want like fame, you know, the glory, but with climbing, you just have a love or a passion for what you're doing. I guess the big part too is, like I was saying, it's, it's challenging. It, I feel like confidence is, it like overlaps, so you can like become a confident climber and like trust your abilities and it'll help you like in other parts of you know, your life. If you're a confident climber, you can be a confident, like whatever. Yeah, confidence isn't specific to like whatever you did to gain that confidence. I like that all the girls are in pretty good shape. <laughs> there aren't very many out of shape girls in climbing. And like I, I think I'm doing more of what makes me happy. Like I. I love being outdoors and I love just being on adventures and being in community with people. And I wasn't like, I didn't have any of that really before climbing. So. Love cannot be blind. All the time. Tear off the sheets on my bed. For sleep till I'm dead. No, I think uh, people in the climbing community, you get a lot of different types of personalities, time. but everybody's focused on the same goal, so bring some interesting people you together. Begun to see. But, like, it has to do with like the people or the community. Know, climbers are just the people who kind of stick it out in climbing. You can't get good at climbing unless you humble yourself, unless you learn to like not try to be the best at everything. You have to accept that you're not the best. And you have to take advice from people and you have to try a bunch of times at different things. And if you can't humble yourself, you're not going to last very long. And so the people that kind of become a part of the climbing community are usually pretty humble, pretty kind. So that's that's definitely like a big aspect about what I like about climbing. You're past, past, past. No, past, past, past. Love can 
not be blind All the time Bury the sheep in my head No chance for sleep till I'm dead I like climbing but I also like the community Everybody is, I don't know they're different than everybody else. It's, it's nice to kind of have a little family that you can share, you know, a passion for something with. person. I don't know, so I, I kind of always wanted to do that. I always wanted to start a, a business, but I was too afraid. And, oh, it'll never work or whatever. And then had like one of those brief moments where you get to realize like that life is pretty short and, like it was really real you know it got really real and I realized that like I'm not going to be around forever and uh, that if there's something that I want to do like just kind of do it now and pretty much like right after that like I started Sendaholic like I didn't really wait much longer you know I didn't know what to expect I didn't know how profitable it would be or anything like that I knew I was there's like a huge learning curve I just figured I'd try it and learn along the way and see how it all went and like just over time like it's kind of become its own thing is like I don't know I don't even know what, I don't even know what you would call what Sonolic is I don't even know what that is I don't know you know I just know that at this point like people like wearing shirts with Sonolic logos and people like watching the videos and like I feel like really blessed to be honest I moved in with the manager of Climax, and he picked another random roommate, this guy named Rico that I didn't know at all, I wasn't sure, I didn't really know him too well. I'd seen him around the gym, seemed like a nice guy, but it turned out he started Sendaholic, and I was just always around for it, I was lucky to be around for it, because it got to meet a lot of people and do a lot of fun things I wouldn't have otherwise. So I think we're lucky to live in Arizona and have a place like that, because you don't see overhung limestone so pocketed, you know, and hardly anywhere else, and it's a hard, it's, to me, like, that represents bouldering in itself, you look at a problem, and it looks hard. You know, I was in good shape before I started climbing, and it was still, like, really hard for me to do, I just like pushing myself, and, like, I don't like not being able to do stuff, so, and that's the thing about climbing, there's always going to be stuff that I can't do, so, there's always something to chase, something to try and get better at. I just like the 
effect. Like you can just throw down a pad and go, and like you don't have to like climb up to the crux every time, or you know, take and like feel bad about your partner waiting for you to start climbing again. Like I feel always feel rushed because I don't want like my belayer to be like, holy crap, hurry <laughs> up. It's easy to like something when you're good at it. And it's even more fun when you like, have to be challenged. Like it's still really challenging. It's not like. I was good at it and nothing came as a challenge. There was stuff that was hard and, and it like got to me personally, like I wanted to get it. It's I like the horizontal way of climbing or whatever, it's cool, but a lot of it's sometimes it can be very like like putting pressure if you're by like keeping tension in your whole body and that's like my anti style parts. Um, but I like when you can get a toe cam in and just hang. I think it was addicting. Like when I first did it I was like what I could do anything I want. Like there's so many holes and and everything like but it just like figuring out the pattern that worked best or the pattern that worked best. A lot of try hard in all the bouldering there. Is that when you start on the rail, you start on the inside on the skirt, make a few real hard moves out to the out to the edge, and then transition up the face. It's pretty typical of the rest of Priest draw. You got a couple real hard moves to the lift, and then. Then it's pretty much you don't blow the top out. Whereas, like sometimes outside, you have to get your feet like at the same level as your hands. And you're like sideways at the top of a climb, and if you, you know, if your hands blow or whatever, you're gonna come down sideways to like a pad or two or three or whatever. There's like rocks everywhere, and I've gotten pretty banged up outside. So, you know, luckily nothing too bad, but. You get banged up. This was kind of cool about it. Like, I want to be as fun if it was safe, I guess. And that's definitely the biggest part I think of. Like, like that holds me back. Is that mentally, I let it get in my head too much. So, I think, I think the biggest thing I need to work on is my head game. It's okay. I mean, we didn't try a ton of areas, so it's hard to really, I don't know, say what I really liked about it, just because we didn't just climb a whole lot, but I mean, the tower was really cool. Was really hot. in my climbing that you guys will point out or tell me you need to work on this or if I'm just like kind of stagnant on a climb or I'm just sitting there I'm like oh no should I go? You guys are like keep moving butters go 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 and I don't know it helps to push me. I don't know I probably didn't do it the best way but it was just what I was comfortable with you know. It's like I don't know I just if I would have pulled too hard and not stuck that final like little like lip it I would like you know, kind of like swung out and fallen off the tour. There were no pads and like, even like, I don't know, it would have been not good, so. It's just 
a gorgeous canyon. It's different than the rest of the climbing I've seen in Flagstaff, and it suits my style really well. There's not a lot of not a lot of like sharp crimps, and I I hate crimps. <laughs> More of a sloper kind of person. I like Kelly's a lot, and maybe that's because I just felt really good there, and it like I don't know. I think I like the setting. Like it's there's spots of sun and spots of shade. Like I normally don't really like the sandstone feel. It's like really like that pissed me off at first. I was like, oh, what is this? I could like have an open hand for the most part, and then I think the top outs like since they're crappy and a lot of it's high ball, like it pushes me to like actually send it because I hate falling, I hate it. It's like I think maybe being a rope climber that hated to fall has pushed me to be a better boulderer because I still hate falling. Kelly's is just cool because it's like a head game. Like, the top belts aren't necessarily guaranteed. It's like you're at the tippity top of the climb and you're still kind of like, I don't know. Whenever that happens, it's, you just gotta trust yourself. When I was at Kelly's, there was Tuck Finch. Like a big move there. Like I just like to get up there and just go for the move, just to try it. You know, like a, once I felt like secure. Like I, I guess I like big moves if I feel super secure, and as long as the big move doesn't go to a sharp edge. Like, like that move up there was just a big jug, you know, and it felt it felt good, and I felt secure going to it. Times are lying. Really, I just want to climb as hard as I can for as long as I can. It's more, you get so much enjoyment out of it, I don't ever want to stop. It feels to me too much, you know, that, that push. Even if you can't pull hard, you can still get sketched out on scary stuff that's easier. There's something for everybody in climbing, which is another thing that draws me to it. She drives me up and close it fit well for a time with wakes like a drum. She grows a lot of me. Nice. 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 I think that's a big part of how it's topping out. It's done. <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about falling and hitting my head. I don't know, it's probably the view is really cool. Once you're up there, it's you're kind of alone, but yet not alone because you can still see everyone below you, you know? But the rock is just, I don't know, it looks really cool. And it was where I got my first view for, so it kind of holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> it out. <laughs>
<laughs> Mother Invention is one of the coolest looking climbs I've ever done. Because you start and you pull out hard and move into the shoulder, you know, off your shoulder to a bad pocket and then you have to hand foot match and do a huge drop knee. I gotta give some credit to whoever figured that out because I don't know about it. The way the rock is propped up, you can like get underneath it and there's a bunch of holes and it's climbable if you know what you need to do to get out from underneath. But especially on the extension, they're not necessarily harder, it's just they pump you out before you get back into the original climb. Let's go back to <laughs> like I just like how the whole thing is underneath. And then you still like so you go underneath and then you come out and then you still have like a rock climb get to the top of the rock and it's just like a freestanding boulder like out there by itself like with a like, like gorgeous backdrop. Um, just the aesthetics of it look really cool and I like like climbs where you have to like drop knee or twist your hips or like flip around this way and like that's pretty much my other extension right there. Once you get back into the invention like go up to this like pocket -y sloper thing and then like just get this like really cool looking drop knee and come up to like the first hold is this crimper and once you kind of get there you, you can kind of start to get your feet towards the, the face of the climb and you gotta like this big move where you actually like a lot of people cut feet and then you, you kind of step up and come up into this under clean and by then you're just like really really pumped and you get this toe hook and you just like toss to the sloper and the sloper is like not great it's not a give me at all especially after doing all the moves underneath. That's the most frustrating one to fall on because if you don't, if you stick that and you can like go off of it, it's done. Like that's the worst one. Like that's, I hate falling right there. Like it's so, it's so heartbreaking. And like one time, the time I actually got it, like I was working that night and me and Gilbert ran out there like before work and, and then I was able to like somehow just get it to go. I just, I don't know, I really want to get it on video. It looks really cool. I haven't seen any video of the extension. <laughs> but I couldn't do both. I couldn't like film it and do the climb. Like I had to focus like 100% on the climb. And I can like I barely was able to like just like pull it out of my ass. When, when I got it, I didn't have any questions that I was gonna be able to do it again. Like I felt like if I would have gone back out there fresh, I could have done it again. I think that's what disappointed me so much was that I couldn't do it again. I don't know. When I think about like going outside and where I want to go, like you know, what my projects are, like, the, the climbs that I want to get before I leave Arizona, and that's like the only one I really give a shit about. That's a good. Uh, I like that. That's a good Everything that I own is like it's packed up and it's in a backpack and it's it's I threw so much shit away. You know, I sold a ton of stuff. Like I have the money from it now to like feed myself for a while. I'm excited just to see what happens. I've always wanted to do something like this, but I would never feel like completely secure doing it alone. So once I found someone else that wanted to do it too, I was like, oh yes, now is the time. But you know, like now or never, because I don't know when I'm gonna find someone else that like has this dream, you know, this desire to go on a trip like this. A lot of people are afraid of it. Let me go. Work gets in the way of climbing. I feel sometimes like, a little bit easier though if you're just like, fuck it. I got a tent. I got a sleeping bag. I'm gonna just go sleep at the rocks be outside. I feel like you get stronger outside for some reason. Whether it's like you're just interacting with nature and feeding off that or I don't know what it is but all I know is I climb way harder outside.
And the tramway seems cool just from everyone being excited about it. And then Bishop, because Shelton was like, couldn't say enough good things about it when he came back. Everyone out here, like, I tell people out here, you know, because not very many people from the East Coast out here. And they're like, what do you mean you haven't been to California or Oregon or like, you know, like, like it's just a whole nother world to me. Like, it doesn't really matter where we stay, like, we have a tent, so we have a home, you know. Like, I'm going to do it until I don't really have a bunch of money. Not enough to, like, feel secure with. And that part's kind of scary. It's kind of exciting, too, because I know I've tested myself before, just never to that level. And I have faith that I'll... I'm not going to starve to death. I'm, I'm going to find something, you know. I'll be able to get money. I'll be able to, you know, eat.